Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Belinda Martin and I'm an artist consultant based in London. Today's video is going to be a Q&A for artists, which I've done in collaboration with NAG Art Show, which is a platform that, like me, empowers artists at every stage of their career, but they do it by organizing global art festivals and sharing insightful resources. So for this special Q&A session, Artists had the chance to ask me anything I related on my Instagram stories. And for the tons of questions we've received, I've selected the ones that I think are more relevant, generally speaking, or which were the most repeated questions. So without further ado, let's get into the first question. Many of you ask how to grab the attention of galleries through Instagram. So the key of getting the attention of galleries is going to be visibility which obviously entails building a strong oil and presence and following. The reality is that 80% of the time, galleries find new artists for the roster on Instagram alone. And not only galleries, but also collectors and creators use this social media on a daily basis, believe me, because I do use it myself as a creator. So if you don't have a presence there, you are basically reducing your chances of getting your work seen online by these individuals. So try to put your work there as much as possible. You see, the world is more about relationships than art on many occasions. Which means that even if you're a great artist, nobody will ever know you or care about you or your art unless we get to see it online or obviously in real life. So unless you proactively interact with the galleries, creators or your peers, you need to get out of your comfort zone and network if you want to approach an art gallery, basically. Indeed, I would advise dedicating 70 or 80% of your time to self-promotion and networking online, on Instagram specifically. And then 20-30% of your time to actually producing work. It's important also to ask questions and interact with fellow artists. Because if you don't know any gallery owners previously, you're gonna start by establishing contact with all the successful artists. And this is because word of mouth recommendations are super important and actually many gallery owners listen to other artists a lot in order to find other artists. So definitely make sure to develop these relationships with your peers as well. Not only with, you know, the typical, you know, typical collector, creator or an art dealer. Other things you can do is, as many of you may know, attending to as many opening receptions as you can after you've obviously narrowed down your target list of galleries where you potentially want to, you know, to work with them or where you want your work to be shown. Attending private views is actually a great way to support the galleries you like over time. Because, you see, if you have hopes that a gallery will eventually support your work, it makes sense to support theirs first. And you can support them even if it's just coming to the openings once a month because it actually shows that you, the artist, are interested in, you know, getting into a relationship with a gallery, working with them, being represented by them, etc. All right, next question is by Anna Lim. She asks, how to find the ideal gallery for my type of work? First, I suggest you think very thoroughly about your art, your practice, your inspirations, where do you stand within the art history, so basically have a clear sense of what you do as an artist, but most importantly, why you do what you do. Because now with this information, you're going to do a thorough research of galleries you think can be a good fit for you and your art. You can do this by checking them on Instagram, checking their websites, as well as seeing what artists they currently represent that you also like, obviously, and if, you know, the overall program of the gallery, if their curatorial line of work, it's also something that you are drawn to. I'd also suggest checking the offers they participate in. How often the artists get a solo show, who is following the gallery, and also who is the gallery following, so you can have a glimpse of who their clientele is, etc. Doing your research is super important because, you know, not all galleries are the same. They are classified into several types, each with their own set of criteria for selecting artists. So they are probably on commercial galleries, non-for-profit spaces, artist-run galleries, sometimes known also as cooperative galleries, the vanity galleries, and many others. Most importantly, think about where you currently are in your career and why you want to be represented by a gallery. What will you gain or learn from it? 
because you can't sell without having a gallery and also get exhibition opportunities without being represented. You can collaborate with them as well. So basically there are many ways you can work together with a gallery without being represented. So think carefully also about the implications. We've also received many questions about searching for exhibition opportunities. So here goes some do's and don'ts of searching for exhibition spaces. So I guess the short answer for this question would be summarizing what I've just said about grabbing the attention of galleries which basically you want to be getting your work out there as much as possible and promoting yourself on Instagram. Try to network as, again, as much as you can with other artists, galleries and creators on social media and in real life. And you can also apply for getting exhibition opportunities. But the most important thing is to leveraging the power of Instagram's exposure and visibility because that's free. Remember that it's never been easier to connect with people from all over the world and grab their attention without getting out of your studio. And I just said, it's just for free. So you really need to be making the most out of Instagram. So in particular, if you want to start collaborating with a gallery and exhibit there, I suggest you start building those relationships now. If you're organizing your own show, you can definitely reach to galleries or private spaces that you like and propose a collaboration with them. You can actually do the same with creators and involve them into joining your show and so join forces to pitch them to a space. This is actually a very effective method and I'm sure there are hundreds of creators out there that you like and they are willing to give you a hand, at least one of them. Another way of maximizing your chances of getting a space to exhibit is through open calls. So there are open calls of basically anything you can imagine. So open calls organized by institutions directly where they offer you a solo or a group show where you can exhibit and they give you a fee, etc. There are open calls run by private spaces so you can, again, collaborate with them or participate in them in many different capacities. Some galleries do also run open calls they tend to be for organizing a group show and test artists that they see potential and that maybe they want to represent in the future. So check for those as well. All right, next question is by Cyril Gallant. I've just started painting and want to know how I can make myself known. So if you're starting out, you need to make yourself known to the world first. And again, the easiest and most cost-effective way to do this is by sharing your work on Instagram. I know it can be absolutely terrifying at first to feel vulnerable and share your work out there, but believe me that it's going to be so much worth it and you'll get used to it eventually. So when I started promoting my consultancy business, I was so terrified, I was so scared, I hated being in front of the camera, I hated just talking and being so exposed and yeah, feeling vulnerable. But at the end of the day, with every video, with every reel, with every story, I just you just get more used to it until you, I hope, reach a point where you absolutely don't care what everybody think about it 100%. So I'm still in a work in progress, but yeah, it's cringy at first and weird, but it's very rewarding because people know me through the content I put out there and it's the same for artists. So give it a try. And sharing your work shouldn't be complicated at all. You can put up there your finished works, your daily life as an artist, the process of creating a piece, you go into the shop and buying the materials or sourcing it if you are doing found objects. So this can be as easy as just recording yourself while you create, you just set up a tripod and you just start your process, painting or researching, whatever it is. So it can be super simple, especially at the beginning, don't overthink stuff and don't overcomplicate things. It can be extremely easy and you can just put very short videos. It doesn't have to be like 90 seconds real to start. Next question is by Kenny Myers. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. So it's regarding relationships between creators and gallery owners. So he asks, when a creator is invited to create a show at a commercial gallery, who pays for the shipping of works to the gallery? And does the gallery owner pay the creator to install the works on the gallery? 
So answering the first question, normally the shipping of the works is paid by the gallery. However, some galleries only pay for the work on their way to the gallery and then if it's not sold, in order for the work to get back to the artist, this should be paid by the artist. Or it can be that the artist pays for the shipping in its totality. So it really depends on the arrangement that the artist has with the gallery. But in any case, the creator normally never pays for the shipping whatsoever. The gallery owner pays the creator for the work and this doesn't include the installation of the pieces. Again, this really depends on the agreement between gallery and creator. So for, there are instances where, you know, if it's a small gallery, then the creator might do the installation of the works. But generally speaking, it doesn't work like that, at least for high-end galleries or for museums institutions. So yeah, normally the creators in art institutions and stuff basically deal with the relationships between the artists and the museum. They help along with the artist to flesh out the exhibition concept and to create the press release and most of the communications materials in conjunction with the marketing team, if there is a marketing department. Um, they also give the tours of the exhibition and normally involving the logistics of it and basically ensuring that all the organization of the exhibition runs smoothly in collaboration with the different departments that the museum has if we're talking about you know a big institution but yeah normally they are there in situ in the space giving instructions and directions to the art technicians that are the ones who install the works. John Vidal is asking I've been commissioned to make a sculpture made of metal and concrete. Dimensions are roughly 175 high meters and 50 centimeters long and I want to know how to price it. He said, I've sold smaller pieces in the past but never of this size. I've never had a show with a big gallery, only exhibited in smaller spaces and institutions. Then he adds he spent 20 hours per week for a month making this particular commission and around 175 euros in materials. Doing a commission for a sculpture in this case is not only a commission for the time it takes or the money you spend on the materials, it's above all your value, which is something only you can establish for yourself. So it's all the time and effort you invested in yourself, in your practice, to get to the point where you are now. So it's all the time, the thought process, the ideas, the uniqueness that is you. So even if you haven't had a major show yet, remember to value yourself first, always. Otherwise, others won't put the value in you. For commissions, make sure you price your work higher than you would normally price a regular work. Because this is a standard practice, some artists charge 20% more, but it really depends on each individual. If you are at a loss about how to price a work you've never sold, check what other artists are pricing. So artists who had a, have a similar trajectory as yours, so you can start comparing how is the market for that particular sculpture in that particular media with that particular size you're working on. So I'm gonna give you like a concrete number right now because I would need to see your whole trajectory as an artist, your CV, what other works have you produced, for how much have you sold those pieces, etc. So I can have like a better grasp of where you are at, at the moment. But if you are at a loss about how to price your work, you can start by researching what other artists who have a similar background as yours and are the same level as of you in terms of the art career, more or less are pricing, are charging. So you can have an understanding of how the art market for that particular sculpture done in those particular materials and sizes are at the moment. Although, obviously, every art market is completely different for each artist. That's why it's super important to compare your previous sales as well. Next question is by Patricia Watkins. Watkins? Hope I'm pronouncing it right. She says, Hi Belinda, work with installations primarily. How can I become a commissioned artist? Other than perfecting your craft, so that people know you are reliable. I would say the most important thing is to share your work as much as possible, which I know that more often than not can be super terrifying, but if no one is able to see your work you're making, 
then there no one is going to know they're being able to commission something from you to begin with, right? So put yourself up there because people want to commission your uniqueness. So yes, share your work, but make it as authentically you as possible. If you are particularly drawn to public commissions, how can you start being commissioned for public work? You can also check regularly for funding opportunities nationally and internationally, as most public commissions occur through open goals. So check them out. As a closing remark for all these questions, I'd say it's all about practice, visibility, and knowing how to price your works which basically means knowing and standing for your value. I hope all the variety of questions I pick for today cover a broad enough spectrum from the main topics that me and Nak Art Show were getting on social media by artists. If you have further questions, I mean, you're not crazy. The art industry can be very opaque and also being an artist can be very isolating at times. So if you want me to answer further questions, drop them in the comment sections below or just send me an email or a DM on Instagram because I'll be more than happy to help answer them. Thank you so much, that's it for today and looking forward to hearing from you.